this presentation, we will see the ultrasonographic examination of the urinary tract of dogs and cats. So first, we'll start with the ultrasonography of the kidneys. So there are a lot of indications uh, to look for the kidneys and see if there are lesions of the kidneys uh, with ultrasound. So first, uh, the most common one is PUPD, of course. But we can have also clinical signs of uh, hematuria, anuria, polycuria, incontinence, abdominal mass, uh, if we suspect that it can come from one kidney, uh, ascites, that can be signs of protein-losing nephropathy, some fever of a known origin that could be due to pyelonephritis, uh, of course the abnormal laboratory tests, and uh, abnormal uh, kidney uh, that uh, appears on radiography, for example, or if we can uh, do some sort of polycystic kidney disease um, screening in uh, some uh, breeds of cats. So the ultrasonography of the kidney, so first the left kidney is behind the last rib on the left side, close to the spleen, and the right kidney is also uh, uh, located uh, caudal to the last ribs or under the last ribs on the right side, and it will be in general just caudal to the caudate lobe of the liver. So uh, the normal anatomy of the kidney, there is first the cortex, that is in general isoechoic, like we can see in this example in this cat. Then the medulla is hypoechoic, uh, and it can be divided by the diverticuli that we can see here. Uh, and then we have the renal pelvis in this region that uh, is in general a bit hypoechoic because it contains a small amount of fat. In this cat, we have this medullary rim, uh, so that's uh, what we call the medullary rim sign. It's often not pathological, especially in cats, but it can also re be uh, visible in some cases of uh, some diseases. So, like for example, with hypercalcemic nephropathy, with ethylene glycol intoxications, with acute tubular necrosis, chronic interstitial nephritis, and some case of uh, feline infectious peritonitis, so FIP in uh, cats, of course. <coughs> The uh, kidney will have an echogenicity that is in general equal to the one of the liver or sometimes even a bit decreased. So here we have the liver and the kidney, so we see that it's slightly hypoechoic to the liver, but again those echogenicity differences, they can be sometimes very uh, subjective and very difficult to assess because it also depends on the on the settings of the machine. Like for example, normally the kidney is uh, always uh, hypoechoic to the spleen, but here the spleen is a bit hypoechoic because probably the gain in this uh, proximal aspect of the image was uh, too much decreased. The normal size of the kidney is uh, between 3 and 4.3 centimeter in cats, so here we have a kidney of 4.1 centimeters, so definitely normal size and aspect of the kidney of a cat. In a dog, it's much more difficult to determine if the size of the kidney we measure is normal or not, because we can see that there is quite uh, large ranges of sizes. Uh, for example, you can see that a 20 kilo dog can have a kidney between 5 and 8 centimeter, which is making quite a large difference. So it's very difficult to assess the size of the kidney of dogs. Uh, unless it's very small or very large, then it's probably uh, normal. There is another way to measure the kidney uh, size, it's uh, to uh, measure the ratio uh, on the kidney length on the uh, aortic diameter uh, thickness, so then it will um, uh, be, be between 5.5 and 9.1, so if it's more less than 5.5 then the size will be decreased, if it's more than 9.1 then the size will be increased. But again, that's quite a large uh, range we have here. So first, the kidney can have an abnormal shape on the ultrasound, and this can be due to different things. So we have neoplasia, renal dysplasia, so polycystic kidney disease, lymphoma, FIP, or end-stage uh, renal diseases. So like, for example, here we have this case of uh, end-stage renal disease where the kidney is a bit triangular instead of being ovoid. 
or here in this case of neoplasia where we see that the kidney loses normal ovoid shape and is deformed by this mass in this level. Uh, in case of PKD, it's a cyst that can become really large and really deform the capsule of the kidney. We can have a decreased renal size, so this is not so common, and we will see that with the uh, end-stage chronic renal disease, like we see again this example of end-stage chronic disease, renal disease, where we can see that the kidney is measuring only 1.8 centimeter. So uh, when here it's in a cat, so it should be normally, you remember, between 3 and 4.3 centimeter. So definitely decreased size of this kidney. But we can see that also uh, with the renal dysplasia or hypoplasia, so congenital problems of the kidney, uh, in some cases of amyloidosis, but that's more rare. <coughs> then with the, we can have the opposite, so increased size of the kidney, and that's much more common. Uh, often we'll see that with compensatory hypertrophy, so it means that one kidney won't function anymore uh, at all, and then the other kidney will uh, increase in size and try to compensate uh, for the other kidney that is not functioning uh, at all. So then we'll have one large kidney and one small kidney. So that's uh, appearing sometimes in case of chronic renal diseases. But then those increased uh, renal size can be due to uh, nephritis, hydronephrosis. Hydronephrosis, we have an example here. The pelvis is so dilated with fluid that then the only thing we see of the kidney is just the fluid anymore. We don't see the rest of the normal renal structure. And then it can really become uh, severely enlarged because of this hydronephrosis. We can see that with the FIP, lymphoma, uh, that will also create an increased size of the kidney. We can see that with a perinephric pseudocyst or uh, perinephric hematoma. So here we have an, an example of a perinephric um, fluid uh, accumulation. So it means in fact that this fluid is accumulating in between the kidney and the renal capsule. So it's really contained around the kidney. Here it's cellular fluid. In this case, it was due to a neoplasia of the renal capsule. Uh, and it was a seroemorrhagic fluid in this case. But the, this uh, perinephric fluid can also be just pure um, uh, clear fluid. And it can be secondary to chronic renal diseases as well in old cats. Uh, so it will create, in fact, an increased renal shadow uh, on the on the radiograph, for example. If you take your radiograph, you will have the impression to have a very huge kidney, when in fact it's not really the kidney, but the kidney itself is not big, but it's just be, uh, it will just be the accumulation of fluid in between the capsule and the kidney. Then we have a PKD again that creates an increased size of the kidney, neoplasia, and uh, those three are also possible, but they are just creating a mild increase in renal size. So with those kidneys, we can have diffuse abnormalities of the renal parenchyma. So we have different possibilities. Either we have an increased cortical echogenicity, and then we'll have what we have in this example, an increased contrast between the cortex that is here, an increased in echogenicity, and the medulla that stays normally hypoechoic. Second cases, we can have an increase in echogenicity of both the cortex and the medulla. So then in those cases, like we can see here, uh, we will have a decreased definition between the cortex and the medulla. So all will appear a bit isoechoic like here, and then we won't be able to do the differentiation between cortex and medulla anymore. We can have also a decreased cortical echogenicity, so meaning that the cortex will uh, decrease, uh, become darker. Uh, and um, we will see that in case of a... Uh, um, uh, and this will create a secondary decreased also corticomedullary definition because then we'll have a hypoechoic cortex and a hypoechoic medulla. So what we can see in those cases of increased echogenicity of the renal cortex, 
uh, in the dog. In fact, we can see that there is a lot of different differential diagnosis for that, and it's uh, absolutely not a specific sign. So we can see that, for example, with some uh, nephritis, or glomerular or interstitial nephritis, but we can see it also with all those uh, acute renal failures, um, acute renal failures due to toxic agents or creating acute tubular necrosis. So ethylene glycol poisoning, for example, but there are also other toxic agents that can create acute renal failure. We can see that with the nephrocalcinosis or hypercalcemic nephropathy. Uh, leptospirosis as well, and uh, also some end-stage renal diseases. So the list of diagnoses is very long and very not it's very not specific sign for uh, f this sign, and it's uh, not helping us a lot. Hey!